Hey guys, welcome to my newest video for today, April 15th. Uh, first off, sorry I haven't been around. Um, work has been held this week because I made the stupid mistake of going in on a night off. So I worked five, ten till five shifts, and never again. Like, I have been commenting, but I've been commenting via my iPod Touch. I've been too tired to make videos or really do anything. But, um, off for three nights, so yay! Um, there will be a DVD update later today. I'm just, it's like uh, 20 after midnight right now, so I gotta wait till 10 for Future Shop to open to get a certain Blu-ray steelbook. Yay! Uh, but this is, um, cause it's been a while since I actually did this, so um, I'm gonna, I'm continuing on. That is showing off what my top 100 films are. Uh, we last, we, um, and um, in the last video we ended with number 81, so this will go from 80 to 71, so we'll just get started. Uh, first one up is a childhood favorite, came out in 1984, arguably one of the best horror comedies ever made. And as for um, stuff on the third one, I don't think they should make a third one, because it's been like 20 plus years since they made it, and that of course is 1984's Ghostbusters, directed by Ivan Reitman, number 80. I can't really can't really say too much about this that already hasn't been said, but it's I mean, it's a fucking awesome movie. Um, I like the cast, love everything about it, love Slimer, <laughs> and I actually am a fan of the second one. The second one scared me more than this. I saw this at three, saw Ghostbusters two when I was eight, and it scared the shit out of me. Um, but yeah, um, like I said, can't really say too much about this because this movie is almost thirty years old. We all know the story. We all know everything about this, but I gotta get it on Blu-ray pretty soon. Um, I was holding out because I thought they were gonna put uh, 1 and 2 on a Blu-ray, but I guess that release was cancelled. So there we go, uh, 1984's Ghostbusters. Uh, next one up is arguably one of the greatest action films ever made. And I know it, it seems really high on my list, but like I said, it's my list. <laughs> and number 78 is of course uh, 1998's uh, Die Hard, just the first one, because I don't want to go rumbling in my parents' collection for the first, my old DVD. Again, like Ghostbusters, can't really say too much about this. Awesome movie, awesome script. Uh, Bruce Willis totally fucking kicks ass. One of the best lines in history. Alan Rickman is is one of the best actors of all time, and he's fucking great at playing bad guys. Um, I haven't watched the Blu-rays of these yet, I've been just waiting around, but yeah, I, again, nothing new can be said about Die Hard, we all know it's an awesome action film, um, so yeah, number 78, Die Hard, so, I got, oh wait, that's 79, I'm sorry, this is 78, it's, it's past midnight so I'm tired. Okay, now this is number 78. I didn't expect to like this as much as I did. Second one, blah. Third one, blah. I didn't even bother with the fourth one. They should have just left it at the first, but I guess with so much money they had to make sequel. That, of course, is 2001 Shrek. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this. Um, my boyfriend at the time, back in 2001, he thought I was crazy for the fact that I didn't see Shrek, and he took me to see this, and I was like, I see what everybody was talking about. It's fun, it's charming, it's very cute. It's one of DreamWorks' best animation films. Let's see if I can... Eh, I'll try. So, and again, nothing really new can be said about this that already hasn't been said, but it's a, it's a really great animation film. There we go. Number seven... Double check! <laughs> 78, uh, Shrek. Now this one is going to get me some looks, because I don't know if a lot of people liked it. I always loved it. Got to see it in the theater back in 1998. Thought it was funny. It was a great action flick. And all that, so number 77, 1998's The Mask of Zorro, directed by Martin Campbell. So he is responsible for putting new life into James Bond and Zorro. I... I don't know why everybody has a problem with this movie. I thought it was fun. It was actually good that they actually had someone um, kind of of Spanish background to play the character instead of American. And I thought Antonio Banderas was, was awesome in this. He was funny. 
um, I thought he was, like I said, he, well, he, he got a Golden Globe nomination for a movie like the, this. This is, that's kind of rare for an action-adventure comedy. Um, Antonio, um, Benders was just fantastic. Can't say more. Anthony Hopkins, oh my god, he was great in this. Um, a lot of people hated the ending, but I thought, you know, if, if they would have changed it, I don't think it would have had the effect. But of course, even though she was in the 1986 film The Phantom, this is really where everybody noticed uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones, who who actually who a lot of us thought she was actually Spanish because she to me she nailed the accent. She's actually uh, Welsh, um, and she is one of the most beautiful women in the world. So um, the villains are pretty interesting, um, like the the. Um, an army guy. I you know, don't remember Captain Love. That's his name. There we go. I was thinking he was creepy, and um, sometimes he annoyed me. But the actor playing him, he he just played it kind of straight and narrow, and on the side of basically creepy, insane, and just downright insane. And um, the other one. Stuart Wilson, who most of us know from as the villain in Term um, not Terminator, <laughs> um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, he was good in this. Um, and he wasn't like well, you're just your normal villain, want to take over the world, he was different. And I, I liked him as the villain. So, um, there we go, number 77, The Mask of Zorro. Another one that will get me looks, but like I said, my list, don't give a shit. Being the huge Godzilla fan that I am, this was a dud that I was going to go see this, and I really liked it. I know a lot of people hated the shaky cam, but I love shaky cam stuff. Uh, number 76 is, of course, 2008's Cloverfield, directed by Matt Reeves. I thought this was very well done, and they didn't give you a really good glimpse of the monster. This is what two, 1998's Godzilla should have been. It was good. It was action-packed. Uh, it was funny, and thanks to the guy holding the camera, HUD. Um, I liked the cast, loved the monster, loved the idea of the monster. Um, and I love the fact they didn't tell you where the hell the monster came from. Like, for the last three years, there's no speculation. It's it comes from there, uh, it comes from space, it comes from the ocean, but nobody really knows. Um, I do, I think they are making a second one. Because I don't even think the people who made this thought it was going to be a, uh, the hit that it was. Um, and it was a great marketing campaign that they didn't tell you anything. Didn't tell you the name till almost about four months before the movie came out. So yeah. Um, uh, 2008 Cloverfield. So number... It's so bad I gotta check. Number 75 is a, a horror film from a huge series of horror films that I actually didn't like until I saw the documentary and I thought, well, maybe I give the sequels another shot and most of them I liked, some of them I hated, but of course, this is the best. Number 75, directed by Wes Craven, 1984's Nightmare on Elm Street. See, I didn't like the sequels because I didn't like the fact that they made Freddy Krueger comedic. In this, he's scary as hell like he is in Wes Craven's new nightmare. Um, loved, the uh, loved the character of Nancy. She is probably one of the best horror film heroines we've got. Um, <laughs> as some of you know, very young Johnny Depp is in this. Um, he's really good in this too. Uh, Robert England obviously was born to play Freddy Krueger. It's a scary premise. Um, I think we can all agree with that. And Wes Craven is a fucking genius when it comes to horror films, even if they're bad. I still think he's a genius. Like I know everybody hated Shocker, and I like that one. Can't wait for Scream 4. Yay! Tomorrow. Um, so yeah, again, nothing much can be said about this that already hasn't been said by uh, tons and tons of people. So there we go, number 75, Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, number 74, and there's one that I actually forgot, but I'm not going to go searching for it. But I will tell you guys what it is. 74 came out in 1986, still holds the record as my most viewed film in the theater, and one of the only three films of this 11 film series in my top 100. And that, of course, is 
Star Trek First Contact. This is the eighth film, and this one is direct the directorial debut of Jonathan Frakes, who plays Commander Riker. And I think I was more excited over this than any film of 1996 because The Borg is one of the best villains in the Trek uh, universe. This had a lot of elements of Star Trek 2 and Star Trek 4. 4 because of the uh, time travel, and 2 because of the revenge bit, and this time it's actually the hero who wants the revenge. Because if any of you are diehard Star Trek fans, you know that two of the best episodes from Next Generation were the best of both worlds, part 1 and 2, where the Borg kidnap Captain Picard and basically change him into a Borg. Um, and this place, this takes place basically six years after that episode. It's a fan. You even forget that it's a Star Trek film. And um, it's just a great sci-fi action film. And the the villain, the Borg Queen, played by Alice Krug, is one of the Krug. I can't pronounce her last name too much. Is one of the best villains in the Star Trek universe because they made her uh, basically a very seductive character that you can't help but be drawn into the Borg kind of thing. But yeah, um, again, if you're a Trekkie, you know the premise. This is, even if you're not a Trekkie, I'd recommend this film because it is so good. Um, so yeah, uh, 1996 is uh, Star Trek First Contact. The one that I forgot, I don't feel like getting up and trying to find, uh, came out in 1995 and starred two of the absolute greatest actors of all time, and they were only in two scenes in less than ten minutes. But the movie is so fantastic, you absolutely forget. Oh! Uh, Fast Five trailer! <laughs> awesome! Um, but you totally forget, the movie is so great, you totally forget that these two basically only interact twice. <laughs> and only for less than ten minutes, and that of course was Michael Mann's Heat. Um, I do have the DVD, but like I said, I totally forgot. Because I'm looking at like my photo, photo bucket thing for where the places are, and I forgot that I forgot to put the poster in, so it's like blah 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 blah. But yeah, we all know the story of Heat is one of the best films ever made, and like I said, it's so good that you forget that Robert De Niro and Al Pacino only were in two scenes together less than ten minutes. Um, great supporting cast, um, great everything, and especially the music at the end of the film by Moby, that is a great piece of music. Um, I gotta hurry around because I'm almost at 13 minutes. So there we go, 73 heat. Um, another cop-out, I couldn't, I, even though everybody knows I love the certain one, I couldn't just pick the one film. I had to pick the three. That, of course, is number 72, Star Wars Trilogy. Everybody knows my favorite being Return of the Jedi, but had to include them all, because I couldn't just say Return of the Jedi and everybody get pissed. But, yeah, this is great. Of course, the original trilogy, or sort of, um, fall asleep. And not much can be said about these. They are fantastic. They are fun. Can't wait for the Blu-ray. Um, of course, like I said, I'm not going to really talk about this because everybody knows the story. I'm just going to move on. So, 72, the Star Wars trilogy of Star Wars Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And we'll end this on 71. Um, and I really like this movie, though. It's basically almost an hour of just one actor and a volleyball. That, of course, is 2000's Castaway, directed by uh, Robert Zemeckis. This is, I don't care what anybody says, this is a fantastic film. The fact, like, Tom Hanks is one of the best actors of our time and of our generation. The fact that he held the film for an hour, just him acting with a volleyball, that was fantastic. And him and Robert Zemeckis are just aw an awesome combination, like Harrison Ford and Steven Spielberg and um, Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese. Uh, again, we all know the premise, um, and this was the word, the year where I couldn't decide, I wanted Russell Crowe to win, but I was like, well, if he has to lose, he has to lose to Tom Hanks, um, because they were both nominated, both gave a great act. See, like, he was nominated for this. He was, Tom Hanks was fantastic in this film. Um, and not much more I can say, because I'm running out of time, but, yeah, if you haven't seen this, I so recommend it. Give it a shot, even though you know that it's Tom Hanks on an island for almost an hour of the film. It is, it's fantastic. You're just so drawn into it. So there, there we go. 71, Castaway. So I'm going to end it here because I'm right at 15 minutes, almost at 15 minutes, but you know I don't want to do this again. 
So I shall see you in the DVD update coming later or in part the next part of the favorites. So I shall talk to you guys later. Bye.